If you're using one of these heat pads for germination, chances are you're making the same mistake that I was making. After taking a quick temperature reading, you can easily see that 34.9 degrees Celsius is way too hot to germinate plants, even according to the back of the heat pad recommendation for temperature. As you can see, it's not because the room is getting direct sunlight. In fact, right now it's raining outside. And the temperature of the room isn't that warm either. It's only 19.7 degrees Celsius. Good news is there's an easy solution and I'll show you what I did with my grow to uh, make my germination station a little bit better. As a plus side to this, the germination time of these seeds ends up being fantastically fast. I did this with cactuses that were supposed to take 30 days to germinate and they came up in a whopping four days. All of them are healthy, almost all the seeds came up and my wife has made herself a little centerpiece that has those cactuses featured in our main living room. To do this with your own greenhouse or your germination station at home, you're going to need a couple of black trays, a clear lid, and you'll also need an inkbird controller. You'll also need some kind of tape and probably a scissor to uh, cut through the tray or a sharp knife will do the trick as well. To begin, flip the tray upside down, put the heat pad on top and kind of mark out a spot where you can cut out the plastic tray to allow the cord to come in. Once you have that cut out, throw the heat pad inside, center it as best you can and put the tray on top. You'll then take some masking tape and tape it as securely as you can or whatever kind of tape you want and get that all secured up. I used a bunch of tape at the corners uh, just to make sure that the trays didn't pop apart and I also used a little bit more where the cord came in to keep the tray from totally just getting wrecked up. These things are pretty flimsy uh, on the best of days. Once you've got that all put together you're going to need the temperature probe. What I did there is just cut a little notch on the side of the one tray and that allowed the wire to come in. This also lets me close up the tray nicely for uh, the germination. Once you've got this all together there really isn't a whole lot to it. The temperature probe fastened on the side, the tray will uh, pop on really nice and it'll fit to close up and you'll just need to set the temperature controller. I like to set my temperature controller to 24 degrees Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit and as you can see on the back of the heat pad that kind of corresponds with the temperature ranges that they suggest on the heat pad. Now you can use many different types of germination methods for this. Uh, I've used the paper towel method in here. I've also used perlite cups and uh, even like a soilless mix like a mycorrhizae coco coir. It doesn't seem to really much matter. The tip to make this really work out well is as soon as the seed pops, so if you're using the paper towel method, as soon as the root comes out of the seed and you can kind of see the top popped open, it's time to move these things into their cups and get them going. If you're using either perlite or coco coir, as soon as you see the initial leaves break the surface or pop out of the soil or pop out of the top of the media, it's time to take them out. As soon as I see the greens at the top, I immediately take these things out and I'll put them underneath my grow lights. Leaving them in here for even an extra day or two, you run the risk of damping off or the seeds dying. But they just don't transition as well when you put them underneath the grow lights. After that, just make sure the seedlings are kept moist and out in the open air, and I've found they all adapt really well to growing after this point. I've used this method for strawberries, I've used this method for bushes, trees, and really hard to germinate seeds with a lot of great success. So I hope that works well for you guys. In my backyard, you can see a bunch of the different shrubs and trees. Pretty much all the young growth that you see in the backyard here has been germinated with this method. Here's a little pleasant surprise as I went up to film the videos and take pictures of the bushes and shrubs that we've got going on in the backyard. My wife's bird feeder is very popular today with the recent snow flurries or thunder flurries that we had going on here in the last couple of days with a Colorado low. If you like these type of videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe so you can see more of them in your feed.